All right, so Richard and Mark, how are you guys doing today? Right. Not well, and you? Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm doing better now that I'm talking to you guys. No, uh, to, yeah. to, to, to let people know, I I presently have COVID, and who knows when people will see this, but I hope the world is, is in better health by the time they do, because it's really raining down hard with COVID here in New York. Uh, right here in LA, too. So, Richard, were, did, were you able to get the, uh, the booster beforehand, or? Oh, I'm fully vaccinated, and then after, when, then once I got it, uh, I went to the hospital. I got the monochromial antibody uh, infusion or transfusion, and uh, I'll be fine. I mean, I'm I'm not going to die, and I don't have to go to the hospital. But I've got COVID, and I uh. I feel like I feel terrible. It's like having a fever, but you have no fever. That's all it is. Oof. But for those who are compromised, it could cause death. And if they can't, if, maybe there's something within them, within a person, that can't handle it. That's when we go into comic book uh, fear, you know, of what's look what's going to kill us. <clears throat> I think I'm fine. All right. Yeah. Oh, I'm fine. Oh, are you okay? Well, um, we're totally happy to sit here and listen to but you don't talk about, worry about me. <laughs> you go and ask your questions. We're yeah. a little worried. The 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 other two of us don't have any hair. Yeah, um, right. we're both, <laughs> but we are we are worried about you. You gotta um, get the vitamin D. <laughs> to, Solar panels. So I'm not going to make you feel sad all day, Richard. I'm going to try to cheer you up a little bit by asking you some questions. Uh, I want to start by asking you about the beard in this movie and whether it was prosthetic or something that you grew in for a character role. I'll tell you, and I wish it were this smart, you know, or this well thought out. Of course, it was grown because of COVID. The first, uh, the second thing that I did during COVID, uh, I played, and this will be a movie that you're going to want to know about too. It's called Monsters in of California, uh, directed by ah, oh, what's his name, Tom Lebon's. Le, Le he's from Blink One Eighty Two, and it's about it's you'll oh, like Tom, Tom DeLong. Tom DeLong. So it's all about UFOs, and I play mm. a uh, an FBI, uh, uh, not an FBI, uh, a scientist, a, a, a um. A secret service in the in the U.S. government scientist who's on the run from the government because I know too much. <clears throat> I'm camping out, so I should have a beard. I had the beard. I just said, "Hey, I got a beard. I'm in the camp. I should have a beard in this movie." So I kept the beard. What do you think, Tom? Yeah, it's great. That's what he said about everything. So I had this beard, and then I kept it. And then uh, I did an episode of the Goldbergs and that character never had a beard. I want to save it for the Goldbergs. So I had a beard. <laughs> we talk about this because I'm playing a part that is, as I say to every director who hires me for a part that I wouldn't necessarily hire myself for or think of me about, but know that I can do, but they don't know, I, I'm not always thought of. I said, why did you hire me? And blah, blah, blah. So he answers it. And I go, well, I'm going to, what if I have a beard? And that's sort of antithetical to who Richard Kind usually is. Do you mind? He goes, no. And so I did it. And I really had my hair back like this. So I like to sort of cover my baldness. And uh, I just changed the shape of my face and head and, and my chin with hair and lack of hair. And so I was a little different. And that that's why I had the beard. And I realize let's get rid of the beard you know <laughs> have you so you have such an iconic face just to just to uh, focus on the beard for just a sec you have such right. an iconic face that obviously that's you know one of the reasons you brought up is it okay if i have a beard do you feel like um you've gotten like responses from audiences and other things where you've had a beard that were surprised by, by the way i don't have an iconic face and <laughs> I, I, word, I knew it as soon as i saw you <laughs> and what was the word that, that, that you used that why would i hide this face i'll do everything to hide this face <laughs> uh, what do other people say you know i meet some people and they go oh you're taller than i thought you'd be Oh, you're thinner than I thought you'd be. Oh, you're handsomer with your beard. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, beard's not so good. It matters what day. It matters what angle they're looking at me. I just had it for this. I thought it would be an interesting thing. It certainly ages me. Uh, it, I think a little bit it gives me um, 
what's the word? Uh, uh, not superiority, but uh, in, in, in charge. I, I, you know, I, I look like the grand old man. And so I thought I would keep it. I, I don't love it. I would grow it. I would certainly trim it. It was not trimmed properly. And I don't think the makeup or hair people knew how to take care of it. So <laughs> it was what it was. And I'm not thrilled with how it had no, no form, no shape, no contour. It's just the beard I grew. And I'm not good enough to trim it. So that's what it looked like. Did you like it? I, I very much I well I was like I was like holy crap that's Richard Kind I was I was into it I was into the whole thing I was into I know the it's acting. well I got to like, tell you something else and, and we'll, we'll, let's get to Mark really soon because I can talk all day even when I'm sick I can just dominate the conversation but I have a skin disease called vitiligo vitiligo is what Michael Jackson had it's pigment loss all the pigment has gone. And some of the pigment has gone from my hair. So for instance, I'm gray on the sides, but it's not gray because of age. It's gray because of, of uh, my vitiligo. There are portions of my hair on my, skin, on my arm and my legs that are pale. My beard comes in pale, except for around here and my mustache. So you can sort of see it here. See, so that's why it grows in weird. It's also, this guy's a weirdo with his, Thinking about the Mandela effect and having these, uh, <laughs> the, 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 these uh, suppositions and, and theories, and uh, he's weird. And he's powerful, but he's weird. And he wants to save the world. Let's be weird. So I love it. I love that we talked so much about your face. I'm going to take Mark <laughs> out of it. <laughs> I'm going to get Mark out of time. Mark, there's a face. <laughs> I love talking about Richard's face. There's I can hear it all day. Oh, no, no. <laughs> there's a face. <laughs> so, so Mark, you had to be bald for this movie, right? I know you go back and forth for, for roles. But yes. for, for this film, uh, were you specifically re requested to be bald? Or is that something you thought would be a good addition to the character? Uh, well, since I shaved it for John Wick, the producers and directors have wanted me to keep it so i, I actually don't know what would, what will grow back when i don't shave you know my, my hand my hand to god i always thought it was bald i thought he was j just i thought that, that because oh. i know i'm from john wick and i know yeah. i'm now from, from this but i also think when i look at you i th I, I mean you should be playing a buddha you should be playing <laughs> every role that the parody that. ever did on tv <laughs> thank you richard um, I just, I just, I just wrapped a show a couple of days ago and I, I can feel some stubble growing back. So, you know, we'll see, but yeah, um, I, I, had, I wrapped a show and I had shaved my head for that and I didn't have enough time to grow whatever would come back in time for, for our, uh, for the movie with Richard. So, uh, I talked to Chris and he was, uh, he was happy to, for me to sh uh, to just keep it shaved. And then I, I, I did ask about um you know facial hair and he said that richard had a growth and i thought that's perfect um as as the younger uh, adopted brother you know he'll try to be as much like his older brother as possible and do whatever he could and um as far as i know i don't have a a, a pigment um um you know affliction disorder but my hair my beard grows in white and gray all over the place too so it actually kind of worked out you know i've got some brown yeah. around here but it's white over here so you know that's in a way what's, what's, what's that that's richard i go v-i-t-i-l-i-g-o oh. so maybe i do you know but i just thought you know these are all these little things that i could c connect with uh with my older brother you know so when you two found out that you guys were going to be brothers, did you feel like that was a weird uh, like, <laughs> connection? Like, like w I guess, Mark, it seems like you were a fan of Richard before yes, you were in this. very so much I'm, so. I'm curious of how you guys, when you first you know, met, how you guys decided on the chemistry that was between you guys as actors. Well, when, when Chris told me that, that he was my, you know, you know, basically older, uh, you know, I, I was his younger uh, adopted brother. I just thought that was... Uh, so ridiculous and so cool. <laughs> you know? yeah. I, I loved it. And, you know, um, in, in, in terms of, of, of playing the character that really evolved, you know, one, it, it was somewhat on the page, but it really evolved uh, being with Richard, listening to Richard, you know, looking at Richard and, you know, he is, he's a tall guy and he's strong. And these are all things that I could, I could, I could, take in you know i'm a martial artist so 
I can't help it. The first thing I do is I do it like a, a, a diagnostics of whoever's in the room, you know, the entrances and exits and the, the person's height and the arm reach and leg. And that just comes naturally to me. My mother and father are both fighters. And I can look at Richard and go, okay, this is a powerful man. He's very smart. Um, you can see that if he wants to go there, he'll go there. And these are all great things for my character. I mean, Mark does that just, you know, intuitively, but the character would obviously have had something to look up to growing up. When you got this powerful presence in mind and body as your brother and protector, it's easy to go, okay, I want to be like you and what you think of me uh, really matters because I think you're amazing. So I just played it from there. And then Richard um, off screen and on screen gave me uh, knowingly or unknowingly just gave me a bunch of things to, to work with. Yeah. Well, I like that you, you know, you talk about how you shaved your head for all these roles, but I think it's interesting because when I, when I, I saw you, I actually recognize you from Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. That's what I knew you from as soon as I saw you. My fiance and I used to, um, your character, because he's telekinetic, he would always throw chairs. So my fiance and I would call you the chairman. <laughs> when I, well, when I looked you up, chair, chairman came up as a, as a, Ultimate iron chef movie. that's what it is okay that's what it is i remember she watches that show that's why she said you're the chairman thank you yeah. <laughs> that's so funny I, I i thought it was funny that you always threw those chairs <laughs> well um now that you have been known for these roles being bald and now you know you have running gun you're going to be bald this is going to be big for you you think it's going to be something that you stick with going forward for a while or you're just going to kind of feel out the roles i'll just feel out the roles you know i, I don't mind it I, although you know after, after a couple of days, if you don't shave it down, it feels like Velcro sticking to your pillowcase. Richard, have you ever have you ever shaved your head? I am dying to shave my head. <laughs> okay. okay. And you got to understand, I don't think I know Mark any other way but bald. So you know him, but I, I don't. That's cool. Bald, bald's great. You know what there I mean? There you go. <laughs> like, yeah, when I saw you were bald, I was like, oh, okay, he's way more like me. Now we have yeah. And we do get a lot of sun, right? I mean, you feel everything up there. Yes. Exactly. Really? Exactly. Yeah. yeah, 100%. That's what hats are for, thank, thank goodness. Um, <laughs> but uh, so, Richard, before we come shave your head, uh, <laughs> <laughs> just wanted to know. Coming for Richard. When did you, when did you, um, finish this project actually both of you guys when did you guys do this as far as covid goes um was it before covid had started did you guys film this during the oh no, no no we filmed during covid okay what kind of restrictions did you guys have just uh we were just careful that's what we were we were careful they you know i i laugh but i think that a movie set or a tv set is the safest place to be <coughs> because you're always monitored. <coughs> Hold on. <coughs> New York City is not the best place to be. You're always monitored. They're always testing you. Uh, you're wearing shields all the time until you start to work or the masks. Um, and you are amongst the same group of people. You're not on top of strangers. So if everybody sort of takes care of themselves, you can trust where you are. And it's, it's fairly easy. Yeah. So uh, it was, and I, I think it was during, during the height of COVID and what we all went through. I think this is now the, going to be the height of infection, but that was the beginnings of, uh, of, of the uh, uh, COVID awareness. So I am, um, I think I'm almost out of time, but I wanted to make sure first, Richard, do you need a drink of water? Cause if you oh, need to take oh, a drink, oh, please. Fine. All right. You are the priority here, bud. <laughs> um, I just want to make sure you guys have a, a sec to, you know, say anything about the movie that maybe we didn't get to talk about or your characters that you'd like to. I'd like to talk some more about the hair. No, let's talk some more about the hair. Please. Let's talk some more. Um, about I, I think that this is, uh, a, a movie that is, a, a, it's it's a heist movie, but it's not a normal heist movie. It is an, an action movie. It's not an a normal action movie. It's a, a, you know, fight them up, you know, knock them down type of movie. Not your typical one. And, <laughs> and I think that my character and my 
my involvement in the storyline gives it a sense of, well, this is just fucking weird. <laughs> and so I think that we're meeting so many things on so many different levels. Now, you got to understand, I haven't seen the movie. I've only read it. I don't watch my movies. But this is, there. Are, there's bizarre stuff. It's like, where, like, you know that ride, at, you know, at, at, at an amusement park, the cat and mouse that makes these turns and everything? You don't exactly know who's coming in or what exactly is going to happen. You just go, well, what the hell? What? How did that happen? Or where, when did he come in? Or seriously, what does he want? And uh, I think it's all pretty much justified, but it's weird. It's just, it's a little off kilter. It's not your regular... Uh, uh, um, Clint Eastwood, uh, you know, let's go after the uh, the, the hidden treasure that, or the mob boss who's working. It's it's a little weird. So, um, as far as you, Mark, did you want to say anything about uh, you know? <clears throat> I know we've talked about your character, talked about his relation, your relationship with Richard's character, you know, the brothers and everything. Um, from your perspective of having done this movie, is there anything you'd like to say, maybe from a different uh, angle than what how the way Richard explained it? Well, actually, every, I mean, I think everything Richard said, I concur 100%. And what I love about it is all these weird things and these weird characters, once you listen to them, once you watch them, you go, okay, well, they have a, a very solid point. It kind of makes sense when R Richard goes off about you know his you know his his tangents you're listening to it and he, he can he can he can support the ideas and all these other characters the actors are so wonderful that um you know you see where they're coming from uh which i think is is, is amazing because there are so many quick turns and ups and downs you know it, it's not the typical uh you know heist or or, or action or, or even drama it has so many different elements which is why I love it so much. Yeah, it's it's a linear story that uh, has a lot of frills. So, um, Mark, uh, last last question before I let you go. You have been elevating yourself when you know the martial arts field, like you do. Your roles are very physical. I was curious if there is like any place in the Marvel Cinematic Universe that you're hoping to you know use your skills, um, maybe in like a Shang Chi film or any of the martial arts film that they have going on, or whether you rather focus on single movies. I can answer that. You name me one actor who doesn't want to be part of the Marvel Universe, <laughs> and I'll call them a fraud. <laughs> well, well, what if they told you, you had to shave your head? Then I'll do head? anything. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> Be in the Marvel Universe. Well, hey, Al Alfred Molina's back, and he looks like your brother. So you guys, I know. Ooh, there Fred, you go. Fred, Fred is a friend of mine, but Ooh. but Mark would be great. <laughs> like, what roles do you want to play? You really are suited for uh, uh, for the Marvel Universe, isn't there thank a role? Thank you, Richard. Um, possibly in the Shang Chi storyline. I mean, there there could be, you know. Definitely. <laughs> yeah, definitely I could see you in the Shang-Chi or a Tel the you know the Ten Rings spinoff uh, that's coming up on Netflix. So honestly, I, I'd love to see both of you in there. Richard, I feel like you would fit. You know who watched it more than anybody? My son. If if I got in the Marvel universe, my son would shit himself. <laughs> <laughs> you should do it just to make him shit himself. And oh, no, I'll do it for anyway. anyway. <laughs> oh, oh, he we he would die. He would die. <laughs> Yeah, I think you'd fit, Richard. I think you'd fit good with like a totally you would. Like you'd be good. I with actually a think movie. I would too, but it's it's a uh, it's hard to convince certain. It's hard to convince Hollywood sometimes. All like right, I got lucky that that, that 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 he fell for me uh, in this role. I, I swear I don't know how he did, but he did. You know, and uh, and I got lucky. I get lucky sometimes. Okay, well, you guys have both been amazing. Um, I really appreciate your in-depth answers. Richard, you have been top form, even though you're going through stuff. Thank you so much for keeping a brave face and getting this stuff. COVID ain't going to get me, buddy. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's an inspiration, man. Seriously, thank, thank you for this experience. And Mark... It has been awesome talking to you, the chairman. I can't wait to, to tell my fiance. And when I get to Shield, it'll be great again. Thank you, sir. Um, 